Hello and welcome. Um, so today we are interviewing the amazing Tess Phillips. And so Tess is coming to us today to have a chat to us about blogging, uh, all things blogs and lots of other amazing things that she um, can help us with as well. So um, I'll just read a little bit about what Tess does. Uh, so Tess is an online success strategist and business mentor for purpose-driven entrepreneurs who want to grow their online businesses, which is us amazing people. <laughs> so that's why she's awesome for this. Um, Tess has also created um, a really great e-course called Blog with Bliss. And it's all about helping entrepreneurs set up and take control of their blog with ease, which is really what we're after. She also has um, a really cool podcast called Tess Talks, which she'll probably chat to us a little bit more about later. Uh, so thank you so much, Tess, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be your first um, interviewee. Yay. <laughs> So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, obviously we wanted to chat to you all about blogs because a lot of our um, beautiful ladies that are starting up are just getting started and they want to know how to blog, how to get out there in the world and lots of different things. So um, a couple of questions uh, we wanted to ask you. So um, when you're just starting out, uh, what's, what and where is the best place to start blogging? Right. So that's a really interesting question because I just, it, it reminds me, it takes me back to when I first started um, and I started in 2013 and I had no idea what I was going to blog about. Back then I had no idea, like I still was trying to figure out what a blog was and I was learning about online stuff at that time and I didn't know where to start and um, I actually asked a friend of mine, like, how do you blog? Like, where do you start? And she pointed me to um, wordpress.com. So I started off with a free, well, I actually started off on Blogger, but I didn't like that platform. It was a bit awkward to use. So then yeah. I um, started using the free wordpress.com. And like later down the track, I discovered that actually you need a self-hosted WordPress site, especially if you are looking to expand in the future or you're looking to develop a website later down the track. So if you just want to start off with a simple blog, um, you're going to need a self-hosted WordPress site because it allows you all the um, customizations, all the plugins that you need to, if you want to have a sign-up newsletter, um, if you want to have, um, you know, the Facebook like plugin, um, all these other features that you can't get with the free version. Yeah. And you're gonna have to you have to you're gonna have to migrate to a self-hosted site anyway, even if you start with a free host. So you might as well start with the self-hosted because it's yeah. I don't know if you had to go through the same process, Teresa, but like when I had to change, when I had to point my new website to the self-hosted, it was just a bit of a um it was really hard. Like it was yeah. I learned how to do it, but I could have saved a lot more time if I had just started with the right steps at the right time. Yeah. So just to confirm that, um, for those who sort of wouldn't know, Word, WordPress.com and WordPress.org are two different. So, um, and I'm, I'm right saying that WordPress, um, well, the first one I said. WordPress.com? <laughs> yeah, WordPress.com is really just a blog and it's just a free platform and it's, it is already hosted. So you basically can use it for free from my, remember, from my memory. Okay, excellent. And then, um, as you said, if you want to sort of build on that website down the track, it has to be a words, WordPress.org website and then you have to look self-hosted. Yeah, find, find someone to um, pay someone to host it or, yeah. Yeah, and you can, you can get it self-hosted through um, GoDaddy, Bluehost. There's a lot of self-hosting websites out there and um, I can also provide you the link with a great, resource to get 50% um, off hosted sites, um, which I give the girls in my blog course, um, Yeah, that link in the resources section. So it's a lot of money. I mean, I got my, I'm with Bluehost for about three years and I, no, two years and I only paid $98. Excellent. So there's a great, there's lots of great offers for that um, as opposed, so that 
yeah, that I don't know what that calculates down to per day, but um, it's cheap. I think mine's one hundred and twenty a year, so that's actually really cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's definitely, and I'm you know, I'm all about um, keeping it simple and being resourceful and not over over overspending where you don't need to overspend. Yeah. Because okay. um, I think that when you're starting out, because you, you're not sure how much you should be spending on what and what you should be doing, it gets overwhelming and then you start throwing money all over the place and you end up, like, spending too much money that you don't need to be spending. Yeah. That's why I created the course that I, that I did. Yeah. Excellent. And so, um, obviously, if you're starting up um, and money is really sort of tight, like it was for me at the start, I had zero, <laughs> um, then the, the WordPress.com is perfect because you can get a start, get your message out there. And yeah, yeah, it was great um, as a learning vehicle for me because um, it actually opened up the door to the online space. And I thought it was when, once I started blogging and sharing my story, it opened up this community. Um, but it was a very small community to begin with because it was just in the WordPress community because when you have the WordPress site, because it's only hosted on the WordPress.com free site, it's just, um, it's quite limited to, yeah. to reach. Um, but, yeah, it was, it, I found it, it was just really fun. It was almost like a trial experiment for me. Um, and the more I did it, the more I became familiar, the more I researched and discovered more things. And it was like, almost like going down the rabbit hole. Like it was like, you know, you just sort of, you know, Alice in Wonderland, it just sort of took you to this amazing adventure of online magnificence. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, that's really good. And I think that's really good information there. Cause I do remember when I started blogging and I, I didn't have any idea and, I did, I was on wordpress.com, uh, but I just, yeah, I realised it wasn't really, it didn't get anywhere, but I didn't really understand it either. So I think that'll really help people sort of understand it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so when, when you do start your blog up, uh, obviously your blog is just being posted to whatever platform you chose so how do you what's some good ways of getting that blog out there or published with other people like Huffington Post or yeah. this is like that what's some good ways to sort of get that blog out there to people um well I think with a lot of um online publications they like fresh material so it's really hard to find somewhere that you can just like they don't like to have the same blog um, published on their sites like for most places there's some places where you can um, regurgitate the same material um, but it's like it's just a matter of contacting the online publication and emailing them and writing to them and saying hey you know I have a great idea um, for a story um, this is my idea can I get can I get this published and they'll either say yay or nay and then they'll give you the go ahead and then you start, you write your blog and you send it through. It's really quite simple. Like Excellent. there's a lot of platforms where you can do that now, which is. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. And I know, um, I do know with Huffington Post, even you can have a, a special login and just keep posting your blogs um, yeah. to them constantly so that it might get picked up or, or whatnot. Yeah. So I guess it gives you some different avenues to, um, to post it across. Yeah, I haven't um, attempted to write for them yet, but I want to send something through to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, excellent. So the other thing um, great about blogs, uh, which I've noticed, especially with my own and, and other people's that I've seen, is that a lot of people use um, affiliate links and, um, you know, links back to other blogs and stuff that they've done. So is that... Is it, is that something that's a really important thing to do when you're, when you're doing blogs? Um, it depends on the purpose um, and the purpose for which, like, why it's, you've got to ask the question, like, why are you writing your blog? What's your website? What's your, why are you doing it? And, you know, who's your community and who's your audience? And is that relevant to them? Yeah. And is it something that you're passionate about representing and sharing? Because if you have an affiliate link, you want to feel good about sharing that link because if you just have an affiliate, um, an affiliate link, so an, 
um, trying to explain it so that it makes sense. So like if you have a usually, so affiliate link is usually the link that sits behind the image, like an image yeah. on your website. So when you click on it, it takes the person to somewhere else to buy something and then you get a certain amount of money for sharing that your, your special affiliate link. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like, if you're, if you're passionate about that, like if you feel good about sharing that, then I think that can be really helpful because, um, you know, you're sharing someone else's message and obviously, you know, you can get a little bit of money as well for sharing that. But if you're just going to have it there and not really do much with it, then it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So it should be, um, any affiliate should really be, um, still on brand and on point yeah. to what your message is. Like, so if you're a health coach, you know, natural food supplies and things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I had, um, I still have it there, but because my website um, has changed a little bit, I don't have that side banner anymore. Like I used to, I used to, it's quite popular to have, you know, the, the, um, the blog page and then you have like a little side banner with, you know, um, you know, like me on Facebook and affiliate links down the side. And I used to have, I used to have that, but um, for Danielle Lepore's design map and also the coach coaching school that I studied with, but because of my design, it's changed and I'm not actively, if someone asks me, or oh, where did you study at coach school? Like I'll send them, send them, send them the link, but it's not like I send it through my newsletter or um, yeah. constantly promoting it. Um, yeah. Just because it's like, it's hard to just like throw it into my copy. Yeah, and you want it. You want it to be nice and real too. You don't want it to be, um, you know. You want it to be organic, not salesy. Yeah, so you, it's got. You've got to be careful um, about that. Um, yeah, but I think you're doing it really smart. Like you're, you know, we're talking about blogs and stuff, and you're obviously, you know, um, an affiliate partner of my course, and so this is a great way of giving information and giving value and contributing. But then also, you know, um, you know, if your people sign up through the blog course with you, you know, you get something out of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's great. And same um, with the college that I um, studied at for my health coaching as well. I, I mean, I totally believe in them. I, you know, that, that course changed my life. So I, um, in my about page, I have, um, you know, information about the course I did and I've got an affiliate code in there as well because if someone wants to, you know, um, join up, then, you know, I may get some benefit for it as well. But for me, the benefit of them actually just experiencing what I did is sort of mm. the main importance. Mm. And that's really the only one I have on my site. So, that, so you're very right. It has to be very true and, um, you know, very, very to the, to the point and meaning meaning for it yeah 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 absolutely absolutely yeah definitely excellent and um so there's um I was just thinking about something else about sort of repurposing content and things like that um so with the with the blogs um obviously because you've been doing it for a while um how do you go about sort of repurposing that old you know, do you, do you go back onto the old blogs that you've done or do you just keep putting in new stuff or how does, how do you work all that out? I, I have to say that I haven't actually repurposed stuff. Like I haven't reused any of my t material. Um, I'm so, I'm one of those people that if I've watched a movie, I don't really like to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I've seen it and it was a great memory, but like, you know, I like new, I like to experience a new. Yeah. Um, it's very rarely that I'll watch a movie twice or read a book again. Um, it's the same thing with my blogs. I haven't reused any of them. Yeah. Um, I might sh reshare it like through my social channels occasionally, like just, you know, re, you know, reshare it if it's appropriate. But in terms of writing content, I love to just write fresh content, but that's just me. I know a lot of people repurpose, um, but I am an ideas machine. Like, yeah. I guess a good thing about me is that, like, 
I don't run out of ideas. Um, yes. I'm always coming up with new things. Um, yeah. if, if, if you're one of those people that come up with new things, that's great. And you can do that. Um, but then if you're, but I think repurposing can be a good idea. Like if, um, you know, take a bit of information from there and yeah, repurpose it for an, another blog. I think that can, that can work too. It depends on your angle and your, you know, why you're doing it and what for. Yeah. 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 Okay. Excellent. Um, so for those who are just starting out and, um, I know a lot of my ladies have, uh, not got a website yet and money wise, it's probably not something they're going to do for a little while to get till they sort of get sorted. Um, so just sort of finishing up, what would be your sort of final advice to someone who is just getting started, really wants to sort of blog and maybe make a little bit of money from the blogging because that's something similar that I hear a lot is that they want to blog and start getting money from it. Um, mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to sort of get started like that? Um, well, first of all, I think if you if you're very brand new, um, to blogging and you're just starting now, it's very hard to make money straight away. Like it's going to take like a month or so to gain a little bit of momentum, get people. Yeah. Cause the thing is you can only make money if you've got traffic coming to your blog. Yeah. And to get traffic to your blog, you've got to be putting consistent, fresh content weekly and regularly. Um, so to get started, you don't even have to um, get a website. Um, there's, I think there's a platform called medium.com where people post blogs. I don't know if you've heard of that one, Teresa. No, okay, that sounds great. Yeah, it's medium.com and I, I stumbled across it a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, you can share your story on your Facebook page. You can share through Instagram. There's a lot of ways that you can write content. But if you want a um, traditional type blog, um, there's, I mean, you can go through the free version if you're not ready to invest yet. Um, and if you need help migrating over to the self-hosted site, you can always get help later down the track. Yeah. Um, but, in, but if you want to kind of start off with the right foundations, I would, I would definitely look into, um, you know, going through something like GoDaddy or, or Bluehost. Yeah. Signing up with them and then installing WordPress and then buying a theme. I love themes from Etsy.com. I don't know if you've ever found WordPress themes from Etsy.com, but if you, search, if you go to Etsy.com and you type in WordPress themes in the search bar, Oh my gosh, there's like so many pretty sites and they start, the theme start off from like $23. Awesome. To, to, you know, $70. I've bought a few for like $70 in the past. Um, the theme that I currently have um, it was only like $50. Yeah. And I really I, like the layout of yours as well. It's really nice and clean. Thanks. That's okay. <laughs> I installed that one. And then, um, you know, when you buy a good theme, it comes with the instructions of how to set it up, what plugins you need, all of those sort of things. So I just followed that instructions and I set it up myself. And then I got, I think I, you know, got um, a designer just to um, <clears throat> just help me with the, co the colour scheme that I have at the moment with the different colours. Yeah. yeah. And then so I've been incorporating that into my brand. Um, but yeah, it can just be as simple as that. It's just like, I think it's four steps, you know, self host, um, sign up with a self host, self hosted website, install WordPress, upload the theme and set it up. Beautiful. Yeah. Excellent. We're actually, um, um, interviewing Claire Richardson, um, next week as well about WordPress. So that'll be really good. So she'll be able to tell us a little bit more about, um, the ins and outs of how to set it all up because <laughs> that can be a bit confusing when you're doing it by yourself. But. Oh yeah. And that's, that's a reason why people go to Squarespace or they go to um, yeah. Weebly thing because yeah. they look at WordPress and they're like, Oh, yeah. but once you get the hang of it, it's so, yeah. it's so fun. Like it can become quite addictive and fun. Like I, yeah, yeah. I quite enjoy fiddling around in the back end. Um, yeah. And when you have a self hosted website, like the customizations are unlimited. Yeah. Whereas I find with the 
Squarespace um, and Weebly and Wix are amazing, but they're very, they can be very, very limited with, and a lot of the people who start off with them end up having to transfer over to a WordPress in the end anyway. So mm. I, I tell a lot of my clients now just to wait and basic, basic WordPress site to start with, and then they can just grow it from there. Unlike yeah. me, who's had to rebuild hers three times from different platforms. <laughs> So, but yeah, no, well, that's all good. All excellent. Thank you for that. Now, um, Tess, obviously, as I said at the start, you are doing some amazing things. Um, one of the best things that I um, know about that you're doing at the moment is your podcast. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, well, I've always wanted to share uh, my passion and um, what I know and also interviewing other people um, on a regular basis, but I, like, I've never been much of a fan of video. Um, I'm really shy. Surprise, you're on video. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't mind it for occasionally, but, like, on a regular basis, um, I'm just, yeah, i got to get used to it. I, I just don't like looking at my face, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> I think we're all a bit the same, actually. <laughs> that's just a weird, weird phobia I have. Um, but I'm also, I also created the podcast to, like, also develop my voice and my speaking as well, like, to just get used to that because eventually I want to do more speaking. So that I found that as, like, a sort of a practice for me as well. But um, I just love getting on the podcast and just sharing, you know, tips and wisdom and insights from either myself or the, the guests that I have on the show. Um, so I'm planning on having, you know, three guests a month to speak about various topics in the entrepreneurial space to empower uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs in life and business. So to help them, you know, to really shine bright and to, to utilise their greatness and put it out there into the world. And Excellent. Excellent. So um, I will be putting uh, links up as well to your amazing blog course. Um, so did you want to just tell us a little bit about the blog course and what, what the, the ladies will learn um, if they go through that with you? Yeah. So um, the, blog co the blog course is um, a bargain. It's only 87 US dollars. So I think that converts to just a hundred dollars Australian, just about roughly. Um, and you get five video training modules. So each run for about 50, minute, 50 minutes um, on average. So the first one is about setting the foundations and helping you to like taking you through the process of how to find a, um, find a self-hosted site and how to set up your blog from scratch, like from zero, from nothing and how to do that. And then, and then it, the second one, um, is about, you know, how to configure the settings and pick themes and it goes a bit deeper and then, you know, it just carries on from there and there's, there's, a, uh, there's a video, I'll have to, um, you have to go to my website to have a look at the details because I can't yeah. think of it. No, anything. that's okay. What's the, what's the details for your website again just so that um, we can go check that out? What's yeah. your web address? Uh, so it's www.tessphilip.me and then slash blog with bliss. Um, Excellent. Yeah, so you can go over there and you can check out the different modules. But yeah, it basically goes, takes you from knowing nothing, absolutely nothing, to the by the end you'll know how you will know how to you know set it up from scratch, configure the settings, up find themes, upload themes, um, and be able to manage the back end in the dashboard. And also, it takes you through a little bit of, like a, there's a little bit about you know business, um, blogging for business and affiliate. Um, affiliate links and things like that excellent excellent well great okay well thank you so much for that Tess we really appreciate your time today and um, I you have shed a lot of light on a lot of things that I know um, a lot of the um, holistic entrepreneurs out there that I chat to have struggled with so um, in especially in that startup phase so thank you so much for that um, thank you so much for having me. no worries thank you so um, thank you for joining us for our first ever episode. Uh, we will be 
doing some more in the next couple of weeks. And obviously, um, if you're doing the Launch with Confidence Mastery, you will see these um, throughout the next couple of months and modules. So thanks for joining us and I look forward to seeing you again soon.